Hey guys, how's it going? Thank you for showing up here and watching these videos and thank you for subscribing if you have already. Um, this is day three of a little five day mini series that I'm doing on how to deal with noisy neighbors. And I'm doing this because a few days ago I noticed that I had 95 subscribers. It's 96 right now at last check. And my first major goal or milestone that I was striving for is 100 subscribers because then I get to do better, cooler things with this channel to help more people uh, and to make it radder. So if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do that. If you know someone who might benefit from stuff about recovery and living an awesome life and how to deal with noisy neighbors and all of other fucking stressful things, uh, feel free to share this. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to celebrate how close we were to 100. So we had needed five subscribers. So I said, let's do a five day thing. And yeah, we're on day three now. So we're talking about noisy neighbors. I've kind of spilled the beans that it's actually not the noisy neighbors that are causing our suffering. It is our thinking about it. And so today, as promised, I wanted to share um, how do you... So if you've bought into this idea and maybe you're just practicing it, like I asked, um, I don't expect you to just believe anything, but maybe I would just invite you to try on this idea that my thoughts create my feelings. No exception. Um... But how do you become aware of your thoughts? Like a lot of us, I know I was before I started practicing or found out about this stuff, um, I was just running on autopilot and I just thought, you know, when I was pissed, I was pissed and that was just the world and I felt like I was just pulled in all these directions and I had no control whatsoever. That's a really powerless, crappy place to be. There is a way out of that that's full of peace and serenity and more happiness and better feeling thoughts or at least more uh, feeling in, like, not in control, but... But kind of, like, just feeling like the whole world can't fuck with your serenity all the time. There's a way to feel more in charge of your peace and in charge of your life. That comes from doing this sort of thought work. Um, but how do you do it? How do you get there? If, you've, if I've been living... See, I got sober when I was 32 years old. So I had been thinking and behaving a certain way for 32 years. That's a long time. And some of us don't come to this work until we're in our 40s, 50s, 60s. It's never too late. But there's often just this autopilot thing happening. And so how do we stop that and create space to start to go, okay, there's a thought here somewhere, but this thing is happening so quickly, there's hardly any space for me to even identify what that thought might be. So first, I just want to share some tips for becoming more aware of, of the fact that you are having a thought that's causing a feeling and getting better at naming what that thought is and kind of pinning it down. Like I think of it like this little little gremlin or something that's running it behind the the machine <laughs> and uh but it's always just like a shadow like we can't see it and so becoming aware of our thinking is sort of like getting your hand like shining a light in the shadow and grabbing that gremlin and kind of putting him down and saying hey what, what what's your story what are you all about what do you look like you know <laughs> why are you ca what kind of havoc are you causing in my life so anyways um First of all, I would just say practice being open to the idea. So, you know, maybe I'm really a big fan of leaving reminders for myself in the form of post-its. Um, I think you can see behind me there's something pinned up next to that picture. <laughs> They're all over my house, right? And they change, um, you know, whenever I find a cool quote or a useful affirmation or something that I want to practice thinking, I'll put that up. So maybe give yourself a reminder. I'm also a big fan of dry erase markers in the bathroom on the mirror and write a thought that you're, like, write down this thing that you're practicing, like, uh, what am I thinking right now? My thoughts create my feelings. What's the thought that I'm having? So just opening yourself up to, like, practicing remembering that that's what's happening and that's what you're looking for it can be really helpful. The other thing is meditation. Meditation is so useful. There are a lot of ways to do it, and I'm not here to teach like a right way or a wrong way. I don't think there is any such thing as a right way to meditate. And I know that word can be off-putting for a lot of people because it comes with a lot of baggage and assumptions about what it has to look like. But really all I'm talking about is cultivating the skill, practicing the skill to be quiet, to be still, and to just be with yourself and your thoughts. When I started, I could not tolerate silence. I could not tolerate sitting still and being with my thoughts for 30 seconds. But I knew that I wanted to practice being able to do that. And I knew that meditation had value and I wanted to get better at it. So I started with a guided meditation. It was an app. Um, I can't remember which one. There's a couple good ones out there. Um, and I set it for two minutes and I practiced doing that every day. And it was this tiny baby step that I could take to now I have a sitting practice uh, where I actually 
med- full on meditate um, in silence for 15 minutes most days. Sometimes I've been up to 20 minutes twice a day. Um, and yeah, I found that really beneficial. So for me, when I say, when I encourage practicing meditation is what, it, one of the things that it does for me, it has so many benefits and I'll probably post a video someday just about meditation and what it can look like for you. Um, what it's done for me is it's expanded that space. So, you know, I've talked about how a circumstance happens and then we feel away and it's just like, boom, boom, one after the other. And we can't recognize that there was a thought in between. It's just, we feel hijacked. It's automatic. That's why we think the, the event creates our feeling. What meditation does is it helps you kind of move those, find the gap and create more space to become aware of that missing step that we weren't aware of before. So with, with the meditation practice, I've been able to notice things kind of slow down and I see something happens. I see I have a thought about it and then I see a feeling about it. Meditation also helped me get in touch with my feelings. Like a lot of times I'd be running with just this tremendous anxiety and thought that was just normal. Um, or I'd just be miserable and just thought that was like the way it was because I kind of always had felt that way. Meditation helped me sort of feel things in my body with more nuance and start to pick up on when like anxiety was kicking in or when I was feeling drained or heavy or, you know, it gave me different feelings um, and sensations. And I just got to be way more in touch with what was going on inside of me and was able to identify specific thoughts and start to be in different practices, it's called like being the observer or the watcher, where you get this place that's kind of out of your drama, out of the swirl of thoughts, and um, you get to kind of just observe them and then decide next, you get to decide if you want to believe that shit. So, but anyways, this is just talking about like, how do you even start to become aware of the thoughts you're having? So be open to the idea that this is how it works. Practice meditation, whatever that looks like for you. Maybe you can only start with just sitting still, just sit in your chair for 30 seconds and breathe. You know, maybe it'll look like that, but I encourage that for sure. Um, And then write. I mean, take a pen, take a piece of paper and write. Um, I I really advocate lots of different forms of writing as um, therapy or as helping me navigate my emotions or get a handle of my thoughts. And one of the ways that I like to do it is I'll set a timer for like three to five minutes and I'll just write down, I call it a dump, and I just write down everything that's in me. And it's bitching and it's complaining and it's worries and it's fears and it's things that I'm interested in and things I'm excited about. And it's just everything that comes to mind. I just write it all out. There's something about um, getting it on paper, moving it from the brain to the heart, to the hand, to the page. And then you can look at it and then you have this black and white document of like, okay, this is some of what's going on in my head. Um, It's very powerful. So write. Um, I've already talked about how I do the morning pages, a la Julia Cameron's work in The Artist's Way. Um, I write three pages every morning, first thing, which has been just incredible. It's, it's kind of a meditation in and of itself. I've been doing it for years. It's completely changed my life. I love it. Um, or just, you know, if if that's too much, start small. I love baby steps. I love, like I said, set a timer and just write whatever comes to mind for a minute, three minutes, five minutes, whatever. Um, So this, again, these are just ways to start getting a feel for what is going on up here. What are the words? What are the sentences that we're buying into that are causing the feelings? And then um, just practice. Like when you have a feeling that feels negative, when you're having an emotion, when you're having a sensation in your body that's uncomfortable, just check in with yourself. Practice checking in. Just practice. What am I thinking right now? And just pay attention to what that is. And you'll start to make the connections. Like this is a practice. So I think this is very simple. Like our thoughts create our feelings, simple, but it takes practice. And so don't be dismayed if it, you know, if it starts small or if things don't shift right away. Like this is just cool to start noticing and just be easy and kind of have fun with it. Just check it out. You're an explorer. You're an adventurer. Just try this stuff out. Um, let's see. So I wanted to share, that's how I practice um, becoming aware of my thoughts. And then I also wanted to share with you um, types of thoughts that cause suffering. So, you know, it's interesting in the example of the noisy neighbors, I have different sort of categories of thoughts that cause suffering. And it can be really useful to sort of pick apart what that, what exactly I'm riled up about. So sometimes it's a thought, I feel like I'm angry and I realize I'm having a thought of judgment. And guess what? When we're judging other people, it does not feel good. Um, 
I can expand on this in another video and I probably will, but there is something very much to the whole um, judge not lest ye be judged. Because what I found is that that judgment that I'm putting on someone else, I usually am holding that judgment for myself. Or I put my, I paint myself in a corner where I've done this with my neighbors where I'm so fucking mad that they're inconsiderate. I'm telling the story and I'm judging them for being rude for making this noise. When really I've only talked to them twice. I have no idea what kind of people they are. But I've just judged the shit out of them and made their character bad. And I've made all these terrible stories about them. But then guess what happens? Like if I'm doing dishes and I drop a pan and I make all this loud ruckus, because I've spent so much time judging them, I immediately feel guilty and like that same judgment just boomerangs back onto me. So that's what I mean by the whole, when you, and that's what I think it meant in the Bible too, it, while we're talking about this, it's not like you're going to get punished if you judge someone. It's not like it's a sin to judge someone. It's just that when we're holding judgment, it doesn't feel good because we are all connected and that judgment comes back on us. And so it feels shitty. And the more you let other people off the hook, the more you let yourself off the hook and we can all just have like forgiveness and a little compassion for each other. And that feels way better than being in judgment. So that's a kind of category of thoughts where I'm thinking like they're bad people. They don't care about me. They're inconsiderate. They're rude. I'm like, oh, those are judgy thoughts and maybe I'll practice some nicer ones. The next two days are going to go into tools like how to turn these thoughts around. But for today, we're just focusing on like how to identify the thoughts and then sort of like looking at what types of thoughts cause suffering. So another clump of thoughts that I've had with noisy neighbors is I realize I'm feeling like a victim or I'm trapped. And so when I've done writing about this, uh, sometimes the thoughts that are being triggered are about, oh my God, I'm trapped in this apartment and I'll never be able to afford anything better. I'll never be able to, I'm not the kind of person that can have, that can own a home with space and I'll always have to share walls and I'll always have noisy neighbors and it's just always going to be this way. That will drain your energy so quickly. That feels shitty to feel like a victim, to feel trapped. So noticing those kind of thoughts, um, and the reason that we want to pay attention to the categories of thoughts is because when we start figuring out how to change them, it can be useful to, like, if you're having a judgmental thought about someone, you don't want to come with the antidote to feeling like a victim, if that makes sense. Like, we can, we want to find thoughts that make us feel better, thoughts that are helpful, that match what's upset in us. So that's why I'm laying out these different kind of categories. So feeling like a victim, feeling trapped, feeling like... It's always going to be able to be this way. That feels like shit. Another clump of thoughts that feels shitty, kind of related to the victim thing, but just noticing um, fear. So there's a whole train of thoughts that come up when my neighbors are noisy that has to do with fear. Fear that I won't get what I need. Fear that it's going to go all night and I won't be able to sleep and I'll be too tired in the morning. Fear that it's never going to stop. I think I said that one already. That goes with the victimhood thing. But there there can be that like your primal brain gets triggered that's like about survival and fight or flight and all this. And it feels like, oh my God, this is never going to stop and we're going to die. Like that's kind of what's being triggered there. Um, fear that I won't be able to relax, fear that I won't be able to do my work, fear that I can't enjoy my place. That's a clump of thoughts. And then the last one I wrote down, I'm sure there's a whole, there's all kinds of ranges of think thoughts that we can have that cause uncomfortable feelings. But these were like the four main categories that I picked out. And the fourth one was, was arguing with reality, which is when you say the word should, should is a big trigger. Um, you know, it, it almost always causes suffering. Like it can be really linked to shame. Like I should be different. And it can be very linked to feeling like a victim. Like life should be different. This should not be happening. This should be this way. Um, as Byron Katie says, who I always talk about and who I love her work, um, she says, when you argue with reality, uh, you lose, but only a hundred percent of the time. So it doesn't matter if we're right. It doesn't matter if everyone else thinks we're right. If we're saying it should be different and it isn't, we're going to suffer because you're arguing with reality. Um, I used to work with a guy who always said it is what it is. And it used to drive me insane. I felt like he way over said it. I felt like it didn't mean anything. But lately, as I've been doing this kind of work, I realized like that is a fucking Zen wisdom gem. <laughs> if we really like consider what that means, it's a path to peace. When we can just accept that it is what it is. Um, it does not mean that we have to like it. It does not mean that we have to be a doormat anywhere. It just means that the sooner you accept it, the, the quicker you're going to be able to really think with some clarity about useful actions 
Um, or maybe you just realize like, whoa, I'm getting all worked up over this thing that's just the way it is, and maybe I can practice accepting it. Obviously, if something's happening where like your life is in danger or your rights are being violated, um, you don't want to just roll over and be like, well, it's happening. I'm a victim. Um, but you do still benefit from saying it is what it is. And now I'm going to act because it's unacceptable. You know, anyways, that's a whole other video too. But I've just noticed if we're talking about the clumps of thoughts that are the biggest culprits for suffering, thinking that something should be different or should be happening, should not be happening or should be happening another way. It always causes suffering to me. It just feels like bashing myself again, like throwing myself against a brick wall. Like I'm bloody and I'm bruised and I'm saying this shouldn't be here. And I keep throwing myself up because guess what it is. So I need to find another way around and through that, which is what we will work on in the next two days. So I'm going to spend the last two videos, days four and five on tools. Yay. Tools on how to change your thinking to find more peace and quiet, specifically when it comes to noisy neighbors, but these apply to all areas of aggravation in our life. So thank you for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.